My name is Kelly Roberts and this is my daughter Alex Roberts. We're from Tallapoosa, Georgia and we just want to share a story that God has given us of His grace and what He's done in our lives and how He can take ashes and He can make beauty from ashes. I would like to start by telling how God has taken my life and He has brought beauty from ashes and He has definitely brought me into a field where I'm working in crisis ministry. It was not something I would have ever chosen, but it is the plan that God intended for my life. I was raised a pastor's daughter and a pastor's granddaughter, and I had never believed in abortion. That was just something I was totally against. And I had two other daughters. I had gone through a very traumatic marriage. Um, I had spent three years in and out of court with my older children and I was very protective of them and I began to slip. I began to slip into the way I wanted to go instead of the way that God had chosen for me to go and I became pregnant out of wedlock. I didn't want to embarrass my family. I didn't want to embarrass my church or put them through any more trauma than I felt that I had already gone through. So I prayed and I said, God, I don't know any other way but to have an abortion. And I just told God, I said, if you can save my baby, you're going to have to do it because I don't know any other way. And I called an abortion clinic in Atlanta. I talked to a very nice lady. She told me exactly how to get to the clinic. It was on the back streets of Atlanta. During the time that I was in the waiting period, I had not told anybody but one friend that I was pregnant. I was very, very sick. During this time, I found a cassette tape um, that just had scribble on it. I popped it in my cassette player and began to play it. And my grandfather, who had passed away when I was 17 years old, came on the tape and he was crying and praying for a mom that didn't know what to do. And the tape cut off. I went in the kitchen and my two older daughters were painting uh, sundials on the table. One of them stuck to the table and it said, God gives life. And I began to beat the sundial with a knife to try to get it off the table and it wouldn't release. I had quit going to church. I had just felt the conviction. I just didn't want to be there. The Sunday night before I was to go for the abortion on Tuesday, I decided to go to church. We had a visiting pastor and his wife called me to the front of the church. And she began to cry, and she cried uncontrollably for probably 30 minutes and said that God was allowing her to feel a pain inside of me that she couldn't explain. She couldn't explain what she was feeling. So she began to pray with me. Well, as soon as it was over, I still did not tell anyone what was going on. I went home that following Tuesday. I got up, I went to the abortion clinic, but before I left, I called one more time to confirm the appointment. I talked to the same nice lady. She confirmed the appointment. I can remember when I got to the clinic staring at the dumpster. I can remember thinking, is that where my baby's gonna go? And I can remember the sidewalk very vividly. It was empty, there was no one there. And I can remember going inside, signing in, and I sat down. After about 30 minutes, I went to the desk and I said, I can't handle being here anymore. Please hurry, I've got to get out. And the lady told me, she said, you don't have an appointment. And I said, but I have called twice to confirm this appointment. I talked to a very nice lady. She said, we don't have anyone like that here and you have gum in your mouth, so that would be fatal to your health. So I walked out of the doors of that clinic and I remember hitting that sidewalk on my knees and just thanking God for saving my baby. So I came home and her dad and I decided to get married. We ended up going through many years of what I would call torture in a marriage, but God was gracious and we did end up getting a divorce and her dad is doing good now and I'm doing good. God is putting all of our lives back together. And most of all, I have a daughter that is just beautiful She's precious. I would take nothing for her. She's an honor student. She is about to start college next year, and she has just been a blessing in my life. 
And the lady who prayed for me at church, she told me, she said, your daughter will be your savior one day. And I did not understand what she was talking about. But while I was going through the divorce, I spent four years of my life praying for my marriage to be restored. I did not understand why it didn't happen. But during the time I was praying, Alex was outside playing in the yard one day and she come running in and she said, Mom, she said, God's given me a scripture for you. And she gave me the scripture. It was 2 Corinthians 1, 7. And I didn't read it immediately. She went back outside to play. She come running in. She said, Mom, did you read the scripture God gave you? And I got my Bible. She was just a little bitty thing, not more than six or seven. When I read the scripture, it said, Those who partake of the suffering shall also partake of the consolation. I'm very proud of my daughter, Alex. She has accepted what she has gone through with such grace. And she tells her story. She is not ashamed to tell the world that God saved her life. She was on a camping trip and she stayed up till four in the morning telling the kids how God had spared her life. She's done several things. She wrote an essay to, to tell how God saved her life. She's just been very awesome about that. And she plays soccer. She was on the golf team for three years. She puts everything she has into what she does. In her studies, she's an honor student. She has never given me any trouble. And she, one of the main things that God did for her is I didn't know how I was gonna make it financially when she was born. For the first six months of her life, I bought not one jar of baby food. I didn't buy one diaper. They were all given to us. And she has been a healthy baby. She was healthy all the time she was growing up. She was not sick. God just, he protected her. He had such a special purpose for her life. And I feel that that's the way it is for all babies. I feel like God has a purpose for every one of them. And she's just such a blessing to me. And I want to share that with people who are even contemplating abortion, that this is God's creation. I didn't really know the whole story, that whole story, until I was about 11 years old when Mama told me about it. And she told me one night, and it was kind of late, and I just, we got to talking about it, and she decided to tell me. And at that time, being young, it's one of those things that you don't really think about. You're just kind of like, oh, okay, it happens, you know? And you just ignore it. I'd always heard, like, abortion's a bad thing and everything, and you don't think about it until you find out, hey, that was going to be me. And then I kind of just ignored it for a while until I got to high school, about 14 is when I, how old I was. And then I started to think about it. I was like, I could have not been here. I could have never had a life, never been able to do any of this that I've been able to do. And it really made me think about my life and everyone else's around me and how everyone should be saved and learn about God and what he could do for us and everything like that. And it kind of made me change my perspective on life. I would complain about stuff all the time, be a typical kid, of course, teenager. But it made me really start to enjoy little things and live the way God would want me to and just become a better person in Him and everything like that. And it was easier to start telling other kids my story, too. I got to help one of my friends realize that it's not okay, abortion's not a good thing. Like my mom said, the story of us sitting around a campfire until four o'clock in the morning talking about it, learning about God and me being able to tell her kind of more about it. And in my essay that I had to write, I had to write an essay about my reflection on my high school career. And I had to describe what my life was like and kind of things that brought me to where I am today. And that was one of the main things that formed my essay was the fact that God brought me to be more happy with myself and my life and everything through my story that could have been ended, could have never been there. I would never change my story. I would never want that to never happen. I, I'm proud of it. I like to embrace it and let other people embrace it as well. And I love my mama and I'm close to my daddy just as well. I love them both and I would never blame them for anything that they chose to do when they were just scared and young. The first year that I was here, God used me to lead seven women to the Lord and their babies were saved from abortion through our story. And still today we're seeing women that are choosing life instead of death because of the story that God has given me. And 
I want it to continue until the day I die. I want God to use me to help women understand that they can choose life and that God is never going to leave them and He's never going to forsake them. He will walk with them and He will anoint them to take care of their baby and carry their baby and raise their children for Him. And I just want to keep spreading that good news to the world. And when you look at her beautiful face and then you think about the child that they're carrying, I want them to understand that they can have that same grace that I had. <laughs>